All right, we're at the completion of our diagnostic process where we are determining that the root collar was 12 inches buried too deeply. Now, one of the things that we did that I do not want you to do when we first started out and we didn't know any better is we would tell the people in advance that we're going to do the root pruning once we uh, expose the collar. And that was a very foolish thing to do because you don't know what you're going to find. We have an additional probably 30 or 45 minutes of work to um, eliminate uh, rocks. Let me see. Let me get my gloves here. I don't know what I got. By the way, I take all of my tools with me out on the job in a five-gallon bucket just like this. If you don't like this style, then I would recommend that you use a hunting vest or a knapsack, throw sack, whatever it, uh, uh, a style it is that you like the best, you go ahead and choose what you're most comfortable with and do it. All right, as you can see, there's all kinds of rocks, there's additional roots, and these roots are notable because they are growing from down uh, below the collar where, they're, where they originate, and they're growing up into this horizon of fertile soil. And as you can see, this soil is fertile. It's been washed off the hill, it's topsoil, and, and because the critical root zone is being covered with it, and the soil below it is lower value red clay, the roots are being stimulated to grow up into this layer, and you can see evidence of that everywhere you go. Here's some right here. They're growing right into this, this layer right here within a few inches of the surface. And that tells you right there that all roots are stimulated to grow into the horizon of the soil where there's a balance of air and water, the two most important elements for root growth. Volcano mulching where it's piled up is so um, harmful because it lures that uh, original burst of growth from the tree into this area around the tree rather than stimulating it out away from the tree laterally to encourage stability and uh, uh, areas where it can acquire additional nutrients. But if there are none there to acquire, the roots will not grow or stimulate into that area. And so what I'll now do is I'm going to take a few minutes and I'm going to pull some of this stuff out of here. I'm going to make sure that the anchors, which are uh, um, symmetrically uh, positioned around the tree are solid and then if it is the homeowner has given us uh, authorization and the money in the budget to go ahead and radially trench and decompact the critical root zone biostimulate put topsoil down inoculate and uh, give him a price on pruning as well so let me get to this and then we'll come back to it in just a minute and we'll take a look at it one more time This is wasted energy that the tree has had to put out. This almost looks like a wire. Many of the roots that you see will, be look, will look like wires. As you can see, this root here has already started to cut into the collar, the anchor of this tree. And that, would, that is what would make this tree a hazard. If this uh, uh, um, uh, um, secondary root had come over the collar and cut into it, we would have had to uh, make some an additional recommendation that maybe this tree is not suitable for long-term preservation, but it is. And so I've got one more little group right here that I'm going to pull out. And there's a lot that's been said about girdling roots. And since we are in the business of uh, root collar excavations as our mainstay tree protection action, we find this all the time. And this is a classic case of what happens when you take dirt and pile it up over the collar of a tree and it allows and invites the roots to grow along and strangle other roots. You'll see this is an anchor root here 
that has grown around this competing white oak tree here and has hugged it so hard that it has in fact buckled up part of what looks to be maybe one of its anchor roots that it squeezed gradually and all of this was under dirt until we excavated it and uh, at this point uh, there's no need to cut this loose and do any radical surgery because the solution would probably cause more problems than um, than the condition itself. Uh, it looks like the anchor is still intact. It's still anchored here. It's still anchored here. Um, there is a, another really good example of what I'm talking about. If you look right over here, you'll see where this root has started to cut into this anchor. And if you look further down, I'm going to go uh, cross over in front, in front of you just a little bit. You'll see right here where this root right here has already cut into this anchor and has practically buried itself. And uh, this would be indicative of a prune that uh, would be necessary. Cut it right here, cut this one right here, and then just let the anchors assume their natural growth pattern, hopefully, because once again, anchors don't do anything to hold the tree up. And since this tree is right here at the entrance to this home, and the driveway, we want to be sure that all the trees that uh, um, um, ornament this particular part of the property, this part of their designed ecosystem, uh, are safe and sound and can resist extreme weather events. And so uh, uh, girdling roots, while being a major problem, are not necessarily something that you need to go in and start whacking roots loose uh, um, without consideration for the long-term health of the tree because we want to save these trees. The owners have told us these trees are important to them and we'd like to keep them. And so you can see getting the dirt away, exposing the areas, cutting the roots that are buried into the anchors will solve the problems and will give the owners a chance to look at, visually inspect, and make a risk evaluation on their own because it's their tree their designed ecosystem and the rules they make equal the savings they take, which means that they may or may not want to take this down and replace it. We've uh, been working on this tree for a few years and as you can see, we've had to pull the mulch back uh, several times from when the landscapers come in and, and, and um, put it back in. And here is an anchor root that has turned and it's not cutting in yet uh, there's one that will potentially have to prune away at some point, uh, but once this dries out, we'll come back on a return visit. This part of the anchor is into the ground, and it's, this part goes out uh, away from it, and it looks like we've uh, gotten to this just in time to uh, save any stress on this part of the tree where this root's cut into it. We're going to cut it out. It'll be gone. Perfect example of how we can um, intervene with a visual inspection, a root collar excavation, and some uh, very uh, focused root pruning. We have completed our root collar excavation and the original purpose that the owner had in mind was for us to deliver to him an opinion that these trees would either survive and thrive or need to be removed and would if they were going to survive and thrive, would they cease to be a danger or a fall danger of falling and hitting the building that he expects to put on this site. And we have determined that all of the anchors are intact. They are here. They are unobstructed. They are still uh, covered and smothered by what we have determined to be, oh, it uh, looks like about that much of cover soil, fill soil, on top of the critical root zone. And so what we're going to do is recommend to him that he do an aeration and a decompaction. Radially trench it, circle it up, inoculate and biostimulate this area, and then mulch it over. All together, this tree and that tree originally were bid for $175 for us to come out here, do this, and look. But when you include the root pruning 
And when you include the radial trenching, the biostimulation, the inoculation, and the mulching, which he will supply, we don't have to supply it, we have a total of $650 for these two trees. And this is not a price that's uh, a standard price. There's no such thing in this business. It's uh, the middle of the winter. We uh, need the work. We have time, and we're a little bit more lenient in our pricing, plus we have materials that are left over from last year. And so my purpose in bringing you back to this collar again is to let you know that the tree preservation actions are designed to lead logically into the next action which supports the long-term health of this tree. The fact that this tree has uh, um, been um, classified as a safe tree. We're going to tag it, number it, measure it. We're going to put it on a, 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 a survey that this owner can refer to and we have encouraged him. He is currently considering a number of other trees on this property. There's uh, six large um, um, deciduous hardwood trees, big white oaks, and some other trees that he wants us to um, work on, and we've bid those uh, all together at another eight, nine hundred dollars. And if he finds that money in the budget, he'll probably call us back very soon if he is convinced that what we're doing is good and will protect him and safeguard him. And the point I want to make to you is if you're questioned at any point uh, as to uh, whether or not you are uh, covered by research and development, you can safely say that uh, the American National Standards Institute covers you completely. And I'm going to go over this again uh, 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 in a little bit more detail as soon as I leave this particular spot here. But I want you to know that the uh, part, uh, the ten parts of the American National Standards Institute, ANSI, and the A300 committees that represent all of the industry groups uh, that uh, would uh, 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 represent our interest give us support for everything that we're doing. We're not doing research and development. We're not guessing. This is supported by long-term research. These committees were set up and the ten parts of ANSI were set up in uh, 1991 and 92. The, uh, they are completely voluntary and I'll get into more of that in just a minute. But this is the start of a process that could go on for the next year or two and this is what you need to build your business and to hedge against the money that you've lost from this new economy.